so much of the scriptures, many of which that is, you know, we use a lot in our, our lives probably almost every day and the wisdom that he's given us certainly shows us a lot of the heart of God, also the judgment of God certainly and how God works amongst his people. David is, you know, when you read a lot of the writings of David, whether it was about him or what he wrote himself, he was a great man. Um, he had his faults, just like any one of us. We've all, you know, we're all sinners saved by grace, and he's a good example for that in scriptures. But I want you to think about this. These are David's last words. So if you were going to address anybody, and let's just imagine for a second, you're about ready to pass away, you know you're going to die, and you were going to address uh, a large number of people. You know, you're going to make kind of your last statement that you could make for mankind how many of you would put some thought into it right all of us right you'd probably stop and you would think what should I say what are the last things I can say and and in this case he he put some thought into it and he talks a lot about his mighty men kind of what happened to him the men that really stood behind him and and really got him to the point where he was at this point in his life he gives a lot of you know David's mighty men is talked about through the chapter and stuff um, also talks about some of the sin and things but he starts off this statement he says the, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. So what he's saying is, what I'm about to tell you, God told me to tell you. It's kind of like what we do as preachers, you know. We give you what God told us to, to preach and to teach you about. And so he says in verse 3, The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me, and this is what he said, He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. So the very first thing he wants us to know, and that's a, a great way of, of telling us, it says, if you're ruling over men, you must be just. Now that word just means suitable, influenced by a regard to the laws of God, impartial, allowing what is due, giving fair representation of character, merit, or demerit. So it's basically, simply, it's somebody that's impartial, somebody that's not on one side or another, that's just going to be just, that's going to be equal with everybody, and he's going to judge righteously in that manner. And so he says, if you're going to rule over men, you must, that is an absolute, you have to be just. And then he goes on to say, ruling in the fear of God. So it's your ruling and your judgment and your just, just part of what you're doing, your integrity has got to be because of your character and your relationship with God, ruling in the fear of God. So he says, if you're going to rule over men, basically what he's telling you is you need to be a Christian and you need to be impartial. Amen? You need to be judged righteously is what he's telling us in the scriptures. Now that's what we'd love to see in all, all of our lives, wouldn't we? Amen. Um, look at 1 Timothy 4. I'm going to come back to 2, Tim 2 Samuel possibly. But look at 1 Timothy 3, excuse me, and in verse number 4. And it says, One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Now he's given a command here um, about a man in authority that's ruling over his own house. He says, Your children need to be in subjection with all gravity. So he's given us... You know, if you're going to be somebody that has a home, that you're in authority over others in your home, you need to be just as well. You know, one of the things I've learned, certainly as a father um, with my children, is, is trying to be just or being equal with them in all manners, whether it's giving them gifts, whether it's, you know, spending time with them, um, whether it's in correction, um, in, in trying to find that just balance between the children, because children are different. Anybody that's had certainly more than one in your home, you know that kids are different. You know, I have three children, and all three of them are different in all their ways, how they show affection, how they get mad, how they, do, you know, how you have to correct them at times, how you have to spend time with them, what more one desires more over the other. There's a lot that goes into that, even as a father. And so, as a father, I'm constantly trying to think to be just, making sure that 
one doesn't feel like I'm favoring the other, you know, and not, that's going to come with childhood anyways, I'm sure at times, but making sure that, you know, that you're cared for, you spent the time and all that stuff, and that's because my responsibility. Well, same thing even as a pastor. My responsibility to the church is to realize that everybody's different in church. And so as a pastor, I have a responsibility to making sure I do just with everybody. Now, just is also different when it comes to exactly what has to be done. One person, you know, like a judge may come up and give one person leniency and then he gives the other person a harsher sentence. You say, well, why does he do that? Now, is it just or is it unjust? You know, just like a parent, as a parent, I don't know how many times I've had to deal with a child differently than another child because one child may, you know, can be corrected a lot lighter where the other person, it won't even be a phase if you correct them the same way. You know, it doesn't even bother them. So trying to find that. One sees love a certain way and maybe spending time with that child is how they feel love and the other one is gifts, you know, and, and that's how it is with one of my kids. You know, Jack is a gifts kid. He likes rewards and stuff where Savannah likes time, you know, and, you know, so it's just finding those differences because one you may give more time to, the other one you may do more for, you know, you see what I'm saying? But you gotta be just, you gotta know the people, know how to work with people. You know, it's just like, you know, using that in our lives is important to note, because in verse number 12 of 1 Timothy 3, it says, let the deacons of the husbands of one wife ruling their children in their own house as well. These are some of the things that, um, pastors and deacons are required to do is leading you know the homes well and making sure you have your children under subjection and stuff and finding the way to do that is a lot harder than you think sometimes <laughs> you know but at the same time just ruling in the fear of God you know it's like this if you are if you're not just people will not respect you would you agree if you have somebody that you don't, don't think is just, that is, that is impartial, you're not going to respect that kind of person. Isn't that true? Amen. And, that, and that's true in life. They're not going to trust you, certainly not going to confide in you. They're not going to go to you if they're in help or something because they don't feel. Um, and they're probably not going to listen to any kind of instruction or correction for that matter from you. Would that be fair to say? Amen. I want you guys thinking a little bit is because I think it's so important for us to really do our best to be just. You know, it's just like even what we're seeing in our country today is, is kind of heartbreaking in a lot of ways, just, and I don't like getting into politics, but it's certainly one of the main subjects that's going on, so it's good to understand it better, but, you know, the, the just isn't really there, um, depending on which party you're with. You know, it's just like right now we're dealing with this whole election thing afterwards with President Trump and he's suing everybody, you know, to try and find out what's wrong, you know, if there is stuff wrong. And clearly there's voter fraud out there, but then if you listen to CNN and the major things, you don't hear that there's any at all. And then you look over at Fox and they give all these other things that are on there that there is voter fraud and stuff. And then you try and say, all right, where's the balance? Where is what's going on? And what you're trying to do is you're trying to find what's just you know is what is going on here it's just like with the mask wearing you go over to you know and I, I listen to CNN and MSNBC and Fox News just because I want to see the balance of everything and and you go over to CNN and they mock for the last year everybody about social distancing and mask wearing at all the Trump events and then Biden gets president and then you don't hear anything about it you know with all those things going together and then somebody that's on the Trump side can look at it and say that is ridiculous. And you hear it all the time. It's like, oh, they don't say anything when this happened to them. And it should be. Amen? And there should be. If, the, if you're for mask wearing and social distancing, you should say it no matter who's doing that. That would be just. Amen? If there's fraud involved in the, in the elections, both sides should say we need to find out what's wrong. Amen? And if there isn't any, they need to come out and say, no, there's not. Here's the thing. You know, there needs to be a just balance. But the thing is, if there's not just on leaderships and different sides and in families, you lose, lose the respect of people. You lose the trust of people. Even if it's true, you lose their trust because they're not gonna believe you, amen? We've all been there. I don't care where you've been at, whether it's in politics and it's in religion, it's in families, it's in churches, it's in, in work, work situations with bosses, employees. There's so many times if a person can't see somebody that's, that's impartial, if they think a person is unjust, 
they lose that entire side. Isn't that fact? It does. And it doesn't matter if it's true or not. They're just going to not listen because they're going to be like, that's ridiculous. I can't follow that. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Look over at Matthew chapter 10 with me. And I want you to think a little bit about this. You know, um, Matthew 10 verse number 28. It says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So there's a very clear statement here. He says, who are we supposed to fear? Why do people not be just? It, there's usually several reasons why. Either there's a selfishness involved in it. Either there's some kind of um, um, partiality towards somebody. They, they lean towards somebody's favor. You know, they favor one side or another or one situation more than another. Um, or just because they're going to afraid of what another person would say, you know, and there's a lot of fear. They were talking about, you know, I'm going to use the election. I don't care if people get upset about it. That's ridiculous, but because it's just part of reality. But people were afraid, well, who's going to vote for Trump? All oh, it was supposed to be like overwhelmingly Biden. But then they found out 72 million people voted for Trump because of the secret voters. Well, because they were afraid of what the majority would say in their lives, whether they would lose their job, lose their friends and stuff. So there are a lot of people secretly casting a ballot for Trump. That's a shame. Even if it was vice versa, if it was towards Biden, that's a shame that people would have to fear somebody because of what somebody else says. Because that's, that would be considered unjust. You know, it's the same thing with this whole Trump not you know, conceding the election, you know, where one of their senators, Abrams, back in 2018, wouldn't concede her election and said that Kemp, you know, totally would, um, won the election, but she wasn't going to say it was all rigged, but you don't hear about that on the other side. And it goes vice versa, you know, and, and the thing is, people sit there and when you're, when you're looking, especially when you're on the opposite side of the argument, you lose a whole bunch of respect from other people. I've seen that happen in churches. I've seen that happen in families with children, with other parents, with a mom and dad, where the father would do something and then, you know, the mom would say something that would be, you know, not just where the way they treated one child to another child or one situation in their relationship with another situation. And because this one person always leans towards that and never does this for the other person, then they lose their trust, they lose their respect. And when you lose somebody's tr trust and respect, it's hard to build any kind of unity in a relationship. Amen? And it's the same thing even in our country. If we're going to get united in our country, we're not going to come united in, um, in uh, topics or, you know, what I'm thinking about. Issues. Amen? Because there are issues that differing on both sides, but we can learn to respect people if we can treat with everybody with the same impartiality. You know, be, ju be just on both sides. I can, I can respect anybody that's just. I mean, I'd agree with everything, and it goes vice versa. It's the same thing with our homes and our families. And I, even as a pastor, I'm trying to be just with everything that I do. And I pray I do that pretty well, but I, I guess if I don't, come and talk to me if you think I'm unjust. But, I mean, I want to know. But the idea is, as Christians, we need to be just with everything we do. If you are an authority over anybody, one of the greatest things you should be looking at is, am I just? That was the first thing David had to say here that came from God. If you're going to rule over man, you must be just. And I am finding that more and more happening amongst individuals, not only in our country, but individuals' lives. I've seen it in respect of, of people at, at work. I, I've talked to more people. I've been talking to, um, if Brother Marvin, if he was here, he would talk to you. He said about things that happen in his job, and he'll say, you know, it's just they treat certain people a certain way and then other people another way, and it's just, you know, they totally disrespect the person in charge. Well, there's a reason for that. If a person's not just, it's hard to ever build their respect. Amen? And we can't fear mankind. One of the biggest things we need to do as people is not fear. It's just like even in churches, there's a lot of churches over the years where the pastor has basically been a dictator and ruling things certain ways and there's a group that will stand behind him because of the way the benefits they get or the standings that they believe and they don't care about the other person. Well that church ends up becoming a church split because people are afraid to say something until it's too late. You know, I'm, I'm a big person about saying if you have an issue, come and talk to me. 
hey man, come and deal with me. I believe people have done that because people have had issues with me over the years on a few things. And, and I don't mind being corrected. Amen? Just make sure you're right. Because I'm always right. So it's going to be hard to... No, just kidding. Amen? But it's, it's things like that. It's learning where the balance is. Look at Proverbs chapter 12. Look at Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 13. It says, The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. I'll say that again. Proverbs 12, verse 13. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. You know, we need to realize what we say means a whole lot. You know, when people say, you know, you, know, you can't hurt me with your words, they're wrong. You can, hurt, you can kill people with their words according to the Bible. But the idea is understanding that what you say and how you say things to people can determine whether a person thinks you're just or unjust. And the Bible says the just shall come out of trouble. If a person truly is just, they're going to get out of that trouble because people are going to have a respect and give them the benefit of the doubt. If they think that a person is just, they can say, you know what, I may not agree with you on this, but I believe you're fair. So I'll, I'll give you that. You know, and I've done that with people. There's been people I've disagreed with, but because of their impartiality, I've said, okay, I, I can give you that. And I'll rethink it, and I'll double-check myself to see if I was wrong on that. You see what I'm saying? But if I don't think somebody's fair, they are already starting at a negative with me. And they're like that with everybody, because now we're just, we're going to distrust everything that they do. You see what I'm saying? And you're not going to give them the benefit of, of the doubt in a normal sense. And that's why it's important to be just. Proverbs 20, verse number 7 says, The just man walketh in his integrity, his children are blessed after him. Integrity. Integ you know, one of the things, and I'll use politics in this manner as well, um, Fox News gave Arizona to Biden real early in the game of this election. And Republicans were throwing a fit. Trump's White House was throwing a major fit about it. And they were just not happy. And even to this day, they, ha they stood by Biden won Arizona. And now everybody else says Biden won Arizona. And people are upset about that. I'm glad they did that. Because a journalistic TV, you know, somebody that's in journalism is supposed to deal with facts, not emotions and not sides. So when they gave it to them, the facts say... Biden wanted, now how he got it, whether there's fraud or whatever, that's for the courts and everybody else to deal with. But the facts are, Biden got it. The numbers are there right now, legally right now, until it's proven otherwise if it is. I'm glad somebody, they're just, there's integrity there. And that's what we're supposed to do, you know? And that's like groups shouldn't be upset. Republicans are all upset. Now they're saying everybody hates Fox News. I'm just thinking, I'm glad they're standing up and doing the right thing. You know, and I've seen some of that same thing with, with CNN, where they were just, we're waiting on the numbers, waiting for it to come through. I'm glad. I may not like an outcome, but I can respect when somebody is going to be honest about something. Amen? You see what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with our lives. You've got to look at somebody, even though you may not like what the problem is, it's opposite of what you think. If it's done fairly, you can respect that. Amen? And that's what we need to do as Christians in all areas of our lives. You want to be somebody that is considered to be just. You want to be just at your work. You certainly want to be just at your home. You want to be considered just at church and in your dealings of your life because that's where integrity is. That means you go, you stay on just truth despite what the pressures are on the outside. Amen? No matter who pressures you, you don't turn if it's just. Amen? You don't lean towards one side because you're getting a lot of pressure on that group or somebody that you respect is giving you pressure. You don't turn that way. You stand firm because you're a person of integrity. Amen? You know, and that's something that as Christians, it's so hard to understand because even in this, this passage, it says, the just man walketh in his, in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Because I believe integrity is something that can be handed down for the most part. You know, our children, are, 
watch what we are. At certain ages, you know, like my children are young and influential and they respect me, they think a lot of me right now. And I hear that changes a lot at teenagers, but we'll see that, <laughs> hopefully that won't. But the idea is, as young children, they see a lot, and so they're emulating themselves after me. I'll do something and they'll do something after that, you know, because they're, they're thinking of me. And if I can be a person of integrity, they're gonna wanna be a person of integrity. If, if challenges come in my life and, and they get to the point where they can start realizing things and they see there's a challenge, there's a push for me to make a change, but then I'm holding truth on something that's just or in, in, you know, of integrity, I want them to see that. I want them to see that, yeah, the influence, there was a lot of pressure for him to change his mind, but he held to that. Do you see what I'm saying? Because then I want them to do that when they get older. I want them to be children of integrity. Children that judge righteously and judge, you know, of unjust. You guys see that? And that's why it's so important. I can't stress this enough. Be a person that is just. Bible says a just balance is his reward. You know, just balance is something that we need to look forward to in our life. We need to be a person that, that is balanced in our life, but we're fair. We're impartial. We're holding what is right. And I know it can be hard at times, believe me, because sometimes what you have to do goes opposite of what you want to do. Anybody ever been there? It's just like during some of the hearings I was listening to um, of Amy Comey Barrett when she became the Supreme Court and they were talking to her about her religion and she goes, no, I am for this, but I will do what the law tells me to do. That's, I like that, you know, even though she's there and that's her opinion, if the law says otherwise, she has to obey the law. I hope they can change the law in some things, amen? But at least she's a person of integrity, at least by what she says, she's a person of integrity. And it's the same thing with us. There may be, sometimes you may be forced to do something necessary that you don't really want to do, or you don't think maybe even be the right thing in some ways, and I'm not talking about moral things, right and wrong before God, but the influence is there, but you're gonna say, no, I gotta be fair in this instance whether you want to or not, even if the person doesn't deserve it. You see what I'm saying? It's like using an example, someone comes before you and, and they want time off of work and they're just not a good worker. But this other person who's a good worker and they want time off of work, but they've already had two other days and this person's coming in and they want, you may not like them, you may not think that they're a good worker, but to be just, you've given that person time out, I'm gonna give this person time out. You may not even like, the person may not even like you, but you're gonna be just in your dealings with that individual. You guys see that? These kind of things happen a lot in our lives. Sometimes we understand them, sometimes we don't. I mean, sometimes we recognize that it's happening, sometimes we don't. But in every case, learn to be just. And then you can give respect to those that are in authority above you. Amen? Being just is so important, so simple. Because if we go all the way back to where we started in 2 Samuel, in 23... I want to deal with this last part in verse number three. The God of Israel, the rock of Israel spake to me, he that ruleth over men must be just. But then it says, ruling in the fear of God. You know, it's like in the scriptures when Samuel um, got mad at the children of Israel when they said they wanted a king. Remember that? Amen. And, and I understand that. You know, you're, he's a man of God. He knows the right thing is not to have an earthly king. He was right. Children of Israel said, no, we want a king. It was the majority at this place. We want a king. Samuel, mad, goes to God and says, they want a king. I don't want to give them a king. And God says, give them a king. They want a king. Warn them, though, what's going to happen when they have an earthly king. And so Samuel goes to Israel and he says, if you want a king... This is what he's going to do. He's going to take your children. He's going to put taxes on you. He gives all this stuff. But then they said, we want a king. And he says, okay, I'll pick you a king. He did integrity. He was just on it. He goes, okay, if you say this is what my job is to do. God says to do it. I'm just going to do it. I know it's the wrong thing to do. I know it's going to come back and bite him. But he's a person of integrity. You know, that's what we got to do as, as Christians. Just be a person of integrity. Fear God. It's God first. If God says to do something, do it. Amen? And it's just, it doesn't matter if we like it or not, even if we know that it's not the right thing in this case. It wasn't the right thing that Israel had a king. But God says, no, give him a king. And he picked a king for him. 
And the first king he picked was exactly what the people wanted. Who was the first king? Saul. He was a man that looked like a king. He stood head and shoulders above everybody else. He had that look and the power and authority of a king. How did he pan out? Not good, did he? Caused a lot of problem with children of Israel at the time and ended up losing his life in battle. He was even afraid to fight Goliath and a little kid had to come to him. But then the next one, God picked somebody, a man after his own heart, and he became a great king of Israel. Probably one of the greatest kings of Israel. Everybody was compared to him after that. Amen? See, the idea is knowing that just be a person of integrity. Even David, with, with his issues that he dealt with, he was a person of integrity. Even when it came down with the numbering of Israel and the judgment came, he said, Lord, not them. Do it to me. Kill me. At least he knew it was his fault and he stood on that. Amen? Where Saul, on the other hand, just blamed everybody else. You see the difference there? Saul wasn't a person of integrity, but David was, even though he had issues. Amen? At least be a just person, a person of integrity. Amen? So f applying these principles, this one principle, be a just, two principles, and fear God. Amen? Take those two principles, you're going to be above a lot of people in life just in that, that sense alone. Amen? Because we're seeing just, just people aren't as common as they used to be. Certainly, the fear of God isn't as common as it used to be. Amen? But it can be very common amongst yourself and those that you know and around you. Amen? Because I really believe integrity in being a just person is something you can pass on to others because people respect that. There's been some people in my life that I know I appreciate because I knew that they were impartial. I knew that they were fair. Even though I was treated rough in a couple of those instances, I respect that person a lot because of what they taught me, and it helped me to be more fair. Amen? So be a just person and fear God all the time. Amen? Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do love you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, this is a... Lord, a character, a trait, it's something, Lord, that we all need. It's part of who we are. Certainly, Lord, something we need to see more of in our lives, not only in our personal lives, in our churches, in our work, in our communities, in our nation. Lord, I just pray that we can be a person of integrity, be a just person, ruling in the fear of you, Lord. And I just pray that you help all of us, Lord, to apply these truths to our lives. Lord, we need this, Lord, and we need to see more of it. And I just ask that you help us all, Lord, to, to concentrate when those challenges come, when the influence, Lord, of people trying to influence us one way or another, or even if it's ourselves and we want to do something that we shouldn't do. And I just pray that you help us, Lord, to be just, always impartial, be fair, Lord, to, the, to your ability and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us in our lives. Lord, we need to see it in our leadership, and we need to pray for our leadership as well, not only in our, our homes, in our churches, and in our country. I pray, Lord, for our leaders that they will be just. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's take a couple minutes and just talk to the Lord. And, and we must be just. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Let's that be us whether it's you personally in your home, whether it's at work, whether it's with children, especially with young people, because children see that probably sometimes more than, than adults at times. They recognize when something's not fair and something's not being, that, that is being impartial. And so we need to be the kind of people that will recognize that for ourselves. And, and sometimes it may even bother us that we have to rule a certain way, but let's be that person. Let's be that person of integrity, a just person, a fair person, giving fair representation of our character. Let's take a couple minutes and talk to the Lord. And I ask you to ask the question for yourself, are you just? And do others see you as being just? Let's take some time and talk to the Lord.
Amen. If you're done praying, let's stand to our feet. Close with a word of prayer. Thank you for coming to church tonight. Finish out the week. Let's just have some nice weather. and Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for, Lord, another a great sermon from our pastor on, on being just and, and, uh, and, and being fair. Lord, I, I'm so thankful that you're, you're fair with us. And, Lord, you're, you, you give us mercy. You are just, but you also show us mercy. And we're thankful for that. Lord, just give us safety as we travel home. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder, there's Saturday at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be putting those Christmas box, boxes together. You are dismissed.